And we are back. Seven o'clock matchup. This is the big one. This is the winner of this will qualify for stage two. Deluna versus Chang. Jeff Deluna just laid down a nearly perfect lag. So he'll be taking apart rack number one. This is a race to five. These are single elimination matches. It's alternating break format. The nine ball does count as a win if pocketed on the break. We do have a three point rule as well. So three balls must be pocketed or three balls must cross the head string or any combination of the two. See Jeff taking his time here, making sure he gets a good rack. Here's a quick little breakdown of the format. Like I was saying, this is single elimination nine ball. These are races to five alternating breaks on nine foot diamond tables. We're also using the green Andy brand 988 cloth. <laughs> Jeff DeLuna, if, if, uh, if I know Jeff, he's, he's not gonna lay off on the break. Jeff is one of a small handful of people that I studied for a number of years learning how to break. As you can see, both feet come off the ground. <laughs> there you go. That's the old Jeffrey DeLuna. I right love that that uh, Jeff DeLuna and Roberto Gomez style, where they just put 150% into it. I love that. Jeffrey DeLuna made it to the final qualifying match yesterday, but lost out. So he finds himself in the same position a chance for redemption. Obviously we will have other matches going on, so we'll try and bring you some kind of up-to-date scores and news. Tiny bit unlucky there. Obviously had to draw back full length. Couldn't really envision landing behind the nine ball. So now he's kicking at this two ball. Got himself in a little pickle off the gate here. <laughs> here just making sure you hit the two but he's missed it and Chang first visit at the table will be ball in hand that's always a nice feeling yeah Jeff doesn't look like he's feeling too good about it but I assure you that Chang is Straight away, playing a combo. That gets rid of the six ball. Controls the two ball as well, so he's still got a shot. Speed is everything here. I'd love to be near on straight on the three. They switched out the nine ball. It's a different nine ball. Yeah, we, uh, me and Jason touched upon that in the in the last match. Oh. You were saying that these balls come with two nine balls, yeah. Yep. Like, it's pretty interesting. Kind of like it. 
Yeah, it's like a big nine, and then the, the Cyclops logo, right? Mm -hmm. No shock to see these two players in the final match. Before stage one started, we predicted these type of players were going to be near the end and qualifying, so... Stage two player, Taiwan's Chang Jin Lun, possibly top four player in the world at the moment, is in the building practicing again, day after day after day. He was working on his 10 ball break last night. I watched him break it mm, seven or eight times. And every single time he pocketed the one ball in the upper in the same upper corner. It's pretty impressive. We should give a shout out and a thank you to some of our sponsors. Our host location, Griff's Billiards here in Las Vegas. Also a big thank you to Master Chalk, Predator Cues, Cyclop Pool Balls, How Tips, Andy Billiard Cloth, which is the green nine nine eight cloth you see on these beautiful nine foot diamond tables. Also a big thank you to Q Sports International and the WPA. This is day two of four days of qualifying events. Top four players from each day earn themselves a berth into stage two, which starts on Tuesday. That particular event is going to have 50,000 added dollars to it. But we've got some of the best players from around the world here. We've got one of the best players in the booth with me here. He's going to be humble and say, I retired. I don't play. I need a spot. <laughs> now we get to look at Chang's break. Another guy who likes to crunch him. They see the cue ball. He parked that cue ball and the two ball rocketed straight in. Often see the one ball come round off a couple of rails over towards right. Top pocket. So he's had to leave a longish three. So this needs a bit of care and attention. He's killed it too much. I was just gonna say that's a tough ball to kill to begin with. And yeah, look how much he's killed that ball there. Eh? This is a tough shot now. It's great camera work. That's a good look right there at the nine ball. I know they were talk touching on that in the last match too, but that's one of the new Hyperion nine balls. It's pretty cool. Good pot there had to bump into the five and it's not come out too kind very thin if he if he goes for this shot kind of like leaving the cue ball on the left rail behind the eight like thin in the left side of the five kind of ducking but he may opt to be aggressive Play jaw shot. Nearly got there, didn't he? I think you'll see Jeffrey have a go at this. We're going to see a 40 mile an hour bank shot. With a little bit of inside to check this cue ball up, I think.
fired that ball in. Nice big shot there. You've got two options here. You can play the six down table if you opt to. I like playing this ball into the side and just taking a natural path with the cue ball rather than forcing an angle. spin on it and came on the short side of it. Got a little further underneath it than I believe he intended, but I think he should be okay. Again, he's got options. He can try and play it about pocket speed and hold the cue ball, or he can let his stroke out a little bit and take the cue ball a rail or two down table and back up, which I think is the route he will take. He likes to he likes to hit balls hard. Yeah, he's undecided at the minute. He did. He did baby it. He hit it well. that nicely. Yep, just to tie it up. There you see the new nine ball. Pretty cool looking. Tied up at one apiece and Jeff's going to be breaking so both players have broken each other's serve but we're back on serve. May 24th through June 1st we have three different U.S. Open events coming to you from Griff's here in Las Vegas. 24th through the 26th of May, we've got the U.S. Open Bank Pool Championships. The 27th through the 29th, we've got the U.S. Open Straight Pool Championships. May 30th through June 1st, we've got the U.S. Open One Pocket Championships. There's also an all-around bonus. You must play in all three of these events to be eligible for that all-around bonus. But should you win, you gain an extra $3,500 and a spot into this tournament on your screen right now, the Predator World 10 Ball Championships. Held July 22nd through the 26th at the Rio Hotel and Casino. For more information on that, please visit world10ball.com. You can also check playcsipool.com slash events for more information on this event as well as others to come. This event is sponsored by Predator, as well as Master Chalk, How Tips, <coughs> Andy Billiard Cloth, Diamond Billiard Products, hosted by Griffs, hosted at Griffs, I should say, produced by CSI. It's a pretty, pretty cool collaboration we have here, and we get to see some of the best players in the world. As we're about to see Jeffrey the Bull, the Luna. Unleash on this break shot. I wish it'd be interesting to get a camera on his feet. Because <laughs> I'm sure they both leave the ground right about. Oh, come on, Jeff. Oh, my gosh. He went with the whole sidekick there. And came up dry. I can't imagine Jeffrey breaking and not scoring three points, can you? No. no that would have to be a, a faulted rack, I would say, if, if, if the Luna failed to get three across the head string. And for folks watching, or if, if you are interested in learning or studying power braking, braking extremely hard with control. Jeff DeLuna is one of my top recommendations for you to study. You can find some YouTube videos or, you know, maybe speak with him if you uh, have the opportunity to. 
Jeff is toward the top of my list in regards to that. Roberto Gomez is another one. Very similar styles. So Chang pushed out. DeLuna has the option here, and he's going to take it. Looks like he's going to duck behind the seven and the eight, which he's done pretty nicely. He's left the jump on offer, but nothing, nothing too, too aggressive. Difficult to see where he's going to jump this to. Now Chang is one of the best players in the world with the short stick. Is he trying to just bank it straight back up table, or is he going into that nine? Yeah. A jump one nine combination would have been spectacular. I think we're going to see Jeffrey duck again. Get that cue ball right up. Snuggled into the three ball. Did very well there. Yep, again. Is taking away any one railer. Looks like he's going to have to go with a two rail escape attempt here. Chang taking his time here. So Important shot. He's a deliberate player. Great contact there. Wasn't an easy hit. Not been rewarded though. He made a great hit there. Right in the face of that one ball. Like you said, he didn't get rewarded for it. DeLuna has an opportunity now to, uh, to do some damage, possibly take a 2 1 lead. are all laid out pretty nicely. They all kind of connect together pretty well. He doesn't want to get dead straight in on this four ball. He doesn't want to give himself too much angle because he doesn't want to have to go back across table. I think he'll uh, just kill the cue ball there, similar to what Chang did last rack, the rack prior. using the carbon fiber cube seems to be becoming more popular these days. Yeah, I keep seeing more and more of these carbon fiber and carbon composite shafts. couple of balls for a 2-1 lead it will be Chang's break in the fourth difficult to split these two yeah minute. both of them uh, both of them deserve to be into that final squad so unfortunately one of them is not going to make it today but there's still two more days and I fully expect both of these gentlemen to uh, make it to stage two.
two more U.S. Open events I'd like to touch on real quick. August 10th through the 13th, we've got the U.S. Open 10 ball championships as well as the U.S. Open 8 ball championships. Both events hosted here at Grips Bar and Billiards in Las Vegas. For more information on this event as well as other events, check out playcsipool.com slash events. Also would like to mention in all five of these U.S. Open events we've talked about, there's $10,000 added to each one. So a total of 50,000 added dollars added to these five tournaments. And this is the WPA Players Championship Day 2 of Qualifiers. I want to say thank you again to Master Chalk, Predator Cues, Cyclop Balls, Diamond Billiard Products, How Tips, Andy Billiard Cloth, Q Sports International, and of course, the WPA itself. Just having a quick look around, you've got Nick Malai versus Max Eberly. The winner of that will advance to stage two. What a break. Textbook break from Chang. Absolutely squatted that cue ball. Pocketed two balls. Sent four balls past the head string. Nothing's tied up. Open shot of the one ball, but cue ball's going to be flying back across off the left side rail so this needs to be judged well he'd love it to stop her out now pretty good as he shakes his head so he's obviously not quite no that looks alright can he top it and Missed the nine. A tight squeeze, but I think so. Just about got there, didn't it? of this shot is key. Just about right. They just make it look easy, don't they? said very difficult to separate these two it's hard to pick a winner it's going to come down to something minute it's going to be an error on a break I think makes the swing we'll if, should there be a swing I'd love to see them both just play perfect from here on out just waiting for stage two to kick off. That's what I'm waiting for. Yeah, with the caliber of players that we have here you know, yesterday, today, and for the next four days is outstanding. And if you can imagine, it's only going to get better after that. <laughs> it's pretty incredible, the, the roster of players that we have for this event. Jeff taking his time, making sure everything is frozen. He is one of the harder breakers probably in the world. 
and it is very easy at those 25, 30 plus miles an hour, it is very easy to jump your cue ball or even your one ball off the table, breaking at that speed if you don't give yourself a very tight rack. So you can see he's, he's taking his time, but he's putting extra emphasis on the front three balls. He wants them all frozen, but he can't hit them as hard as he wants unless those at least front three balls are frozen. Since he's really focused on getting that one. I think he likes it. I'd like to see a little bit more control on the cue ball, a little bit like Chang. So will he take a little bit of pace off it? Very hard to control the cue ball. It is when you're hitting them as hard as um, Jeffrey's been doing. This is going to be an awesome angle right here. Watch his feet, folks. If he goes with his same power break, I bet they both leave the ground. Jeez. How many people you know jump on the break? Literally. But like you said, he, he does sacrifice a little bit of control when he does that. But God, if it doesn't look fun. <laughs> Yeah, and he's got a nice angle there. He can spin it round off two rails for the two ball in the left side middle. So this is key shot in this rack, you feel. Yeah, the one to the two, I believe, is the trickiest shot in the layout at the moment. Also would like to draw this well, maybe that is what he's doing. He's undecided. He went up, down, up, down, up, down. Do you see that? He lined up with low, then he lined up with top. Yeah, I don't know. It just looks like a natural follow through with a bit of left to me. I don't know. That's what he's playing anyway. Yeah, look, this comes around natural, doesn't it? Yep. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't really see where drawing the cue ball back got him, but hey ho. Probably just landed a slight bit high, hence why he's jacking up, because he's going to come off one rail, come back out into the middle, like so. Perfect. Now, he's not the tallest of fellas, so he's going to get... Well, he's actually getting some out of his bag here. He's probably got some kind of bridge type gadget and there you see that one's clear and it's got all kinds of different levels yeah it looks like it's made out of glass I'll be careful you don't rip the cloth I kind of like those the clear ones I've seen a couple of them now I don't know the brands that make them but I kind of like those clear bridges w why uh, just because I can see the object ball in front Right, let's see. Um, see when he lays this down, it's going to be behind the five. Yeah. But a lot of times when you're using the all black bridge or rest, not you know your X rest is a little bit different, but the solid black one kind of leaves you wondering how much distance is between the bridge and the object ball that's in front of it. I think those clear ones kind of give you a little bit better understanding of how much distance is is between the bridge itself yeah. and the object ball that you're elevating yeah, over. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Jeffrey, I noticed there, when he was going to use the bridge, he holds the cue with his right hand, which is... Um, I didn't catch that. Yeah. He's, he's obviously a left-handed player. I know he's playing this right-handed, but it's because he can't reach. So he's a left-handed player, but it looks like when he uses the bridge, he holds his cue with his right hand. That is very interesting. I'm going to have to ask him about that after the match. Yeah. I've Never known someone to do that. Yeah, some snooker players in England do that. Really? Judd Trump? Yeah. Yeah, he does that, yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't think it would be feel 
normal, would you? But yeah, no. It, some of them do, yeah. It already, I, I can't shoot a straight in ball opposite handed, let alone try to do it with a mechanical device. These guys are playing world class right now. They're both breaking well, they're both playing smart. They're both getting out. Use the bridge, Jeffrey. We want to <laughs> see it. Come on. Already uses a long, longer cue. And Jeff DeLuna takes down rack number five. Takes the lead at three to two over Chang. Right here in Las Vegas at the Rio Hotel and Casino, July 17th through the 27th, we have the BCAPL World Championships. For more information on that or to sign up yourself or your team, check out playbca.com. At the same time, we've also got the US APL National Championships. Same dates, July 17th through the 27th at the Rio Hotel and Casino. For info on that, check out playusapool.com. And we can't say thank you enough to the sponsors that helped make this event happen. Aside from CSI and the WPA itself, we also like to give a thank you to Master Billiard Chalk, Predator Cues, Andy Billiard Cloth, How Tips, Cyclop Pool Balls, Diamond Billiard Products, and our host location, Griff's Billiards. And a special thank you to the production crew. There you see Chang not happy with his effort of racking the ball so far. It's a sign though when you you see the sort of best players taking that extra care. Took the words right out of my mouth. Most amateurs would find a way to just settle. They'll settle for after X amount of time, the okay, I've had enough, I'm just gonna throw them up there and break them open. These guys understand. They understand the importance of the rack and the break itself. fun here at Griff's. Jeffrey's got up another look. What's going on here? So Chang's now called for a timeout because he feels like Jeffrey's pulled a little bit of a move on him. I'm not so sure why um, Jeffrey's got up another look. There's been no no issues with Chang so far and he's breaking hard and he's, he's clearly trying to make the one ball so there's no funny business going on. He's getting back up to check it again. This is interesting. Yeah, it's a little bit naughty for me. I won't. I don't really understand what he's doing. I can understand if the nine ball's moving a lot and it's tracking towards the corner, but he's not easy. He's just trying to chang every break. These players are going to take a break. We're going to take one as well. We'll be back in just a moment.
And we are back. Both players wanted to take a few minute break just to kind of mentally reset. Chang's going to be taking apart rack number six, trailing by a score of two to three. I hear balls falling. He made two balls on the break. He can see an edge of the one ball, so I believe a <coughs> safety will be his smartest selection here. See if Carl agrees with me on this one. I kind of like thin in the one, trying to get the cue ball tucked underneath the three ball. Maybe it does bring a scratch into the equation, but I think he's good enough to control. Okay, he opted to go above the three, which is still fairly effective. He stuck it up though, you know. He's left an edge. For me, he didn't hit the one ball thin enough there. It's a bit thinner. One ball might stay near the rail, but because he's hit it a bit thick, it's come out. And it's give Jeffrey a chance here. He made a great shot there, but he stood up about two thirds of the way through that stroke. And he's had a very useful nudge there. Some of you may know, some of you may not know him, but JRB has entered the building, which means action, action, action. JRB, if I'm not mistaken, was on season two of Survivor. TV show. He's also a professional poker player, but he's a gambler at heart. Loves to get in big pool matches. Back at the table here, we've got Mr. DeLuna addressing the five ball, trying to find his desired path for position on the six. I believe he's got the option for both upper corner pockets. Played that well with check side. Killed it real nicely. Yeah. To just slow the cue ball down. So the loose safety shot from Chang. Give Jeffrey the opportunity to get on the hill. So these couple of balls put Jeffrey on the hill. As we said before, he lost the hot seat match yesterday. So he's come back again today, very strong, clearly playing well. But he'd love to just get this match over and done with, secure his place in stage two. That will give him a couple of days off to prepare. And it will be Jeffrey to break. So we might get to see this jumping break again that he likes to do. And if Chang will come and have a look at Jeffrey's rack. Play a bit of mind games back. Can't see it. Yeah, it'd be funny if if uh, if Chang got up and checked the rack. <laughs> it's 
doing a lot of messing about, isn't he? Look, using his finger. How do you? What's your opinion on that? You think they should be left? The one ball should be left untouched. Do you think it's useful or beneficial to kind of feather it into place like that, or do you look at it more of? I don't know. I'm just curious as to your opinion on it. Mm. I've kind of got mixed emotions about it, or mixed feelings. I see the good and bad in it. My opinion on it is I, I don't think this looks good to somebody new or an amateur watching. I, don't, I just don't think this is a good advert. It's too much messing about going on. Fair enough. That's why I, I like that. the plastic rack. You just get up there and rack them, don't you, in no time. The templates? Yeah, the template, the uh, wh whichever you, you, know, you call it. Just get up there and throw them up, get all the balls touching and break them. Or the downside to that, though, is you're um, essentially guaranteed a ball or two on the break. Well, yeah, but could go either way. It's the the good rackers of the balls. You could say a guaranteed a ball racking like this, couldn't you? You're right. You're right. Carl knows what he's talking about, folks. I just think, um, I mean, it's different when you look at, like, let's say, the World Pool Masters last week. You've got a referee racking, and you basically just tech the rack, don't you? So it is what it is. This is really cool. You get to see him actually spinning the key in his hands on every practice stroke. The feet leave the ground again. He's got some really interesting antics. Pockets a ball successful and legal break and he's got a shot on the one this could send Chang home for the evening well this is going to send them both home for the evening once this match is over but yeah all you can ask for is an opportunity to win the match and this is Jeffrey's opportunity right here another really good look at that new Hyperion set of pool balls really bright vibrant colors the players seem to like it too we've been we've been asking opinions on them and they seem to approve so that's good haven't heard any complaints gotta love that Just see Jeffrey there looking because he wants to make sure he gets good on this four because the five is just kind of hidden behind the. I think he'd like to get the cue ball where it is right now for the five. So he's trying to figure out how to get from the four back to where it is right now. Yeah, he'd love that if he could get it exactly there. He's got a good angle. To Come right back across. Can you see where he pointed there? Yeah, you can't really. Um, you, you're not really feeling. There's a mistake gonna come. He looks like he's playing too good. He might have come up short there. The old commentator's curse. Carl, Carl, Carl. Oh, we're having fun here. Has to be said, he's under hit that by at least a foot. And you can see the edge of the five. And he's made a mess of that one. Don't really know what he was trying to do. It looked like he hit it with inside, which blew my mind right there. So what looked like a routine out for the match Jeffrey might come back to the table. It might be Hill Hill when he it comes back hill, to the hill table. Could be Hill Hill breaking, yeah. You and I commentated on one of Chang's matches earlier today where he broke and ran three out of his first four racks and three out of his five wins. That's pretty darn strong. So he's fully capable of cleaning up these last three balls and breaking and running the next one. 
Well, yeah. And fortunately for fortunately for Jeff, uh, he's guaranteed another attempt, another inning at the table, regardless of what Chang does here. But the thing is, it's a brutal game, nine ball pool, and you never know what chances you're going to get. And I'm a firm believer if you get your chance, and you don't take advantage, you might not get another one. Yeah. And he's, he's, he had an easy chance there, it has to be said. But it's 4 3. Chang's still alive in this match. Been playing 45 minutes. So it's been um, a fairly quick match. You have to say, racking the balls has probably took longer. Halfway through stage one. This is the last round of matches for the day. And then after we've got our four players to qualify, they will be doing a redraw for tomorrow. As we said, Chang likes to hit them down the middle, parks the cue ball very well. And he'd love one this time. There you see, I mean, he must park the cue ball. He needs a ball, though. He needs a ball. And he's not got one. So, Jeffrey. Very rare drive break from Chang. Controlled the cue ball very well, as he does majority of the time on his break shots. The pool gods are looking down on Jeffrey DeLuna. He's missed opportunity in the last rack. And with a dry break, he's got another opportunity here. Again, every ball is sitting there. There's no real big issues other than getting the cue ball where you want it. And he's asking for the cue ball to be cleaned. We got our Outstanding referee, Mr. John Lehman, on his way to the table to clean that cue ball. That tells you a little story, though. It tells you Jeffrey's feeling it a little bit and he's buying just, himself a little time to calm down. Yeah, just to make sure, because he's got to make sure he gets in this. I mean, it's a big window to land in. You'd have to hit it really bad, but. Mr. Lehman giving him the white glove treatment. I was about to call him referee of the year, but he's the referee of the world. Him and Nigel. <laughs> so he's just trying to play this ball, and float cue ball, into a similar position to where it's at really, that kind of line. Going forward behind this five. Yeah, he's going three rails, you know. Not a bad option. People might think it was a little bit crazy, but he knew he was coming at the correct line then, so. It's a very intelligent shot. Nice shot as well. Controlled it well. He's in a real good position now. taking a little bit more time than normal, but he realizes the situation at hand here. He's five balls away from advancing. He knows he made a mistake in the last rack, or earlier this rack, excuse me. And uh, he's been issued a reprieve. So he's wanting to take full advantage of it.
Looks to have a pretty tasty angle here to get over for the seven. You would think Chang sat there thinking it's all over. Now, preference for you. Do you like to stun underneath this or draw back above it? I think in this instance, I'd be going stunning below to shoot. Up table? The seven up table, yeah. Looks as though Max Eberly has advanced to stage two. I saw him just turning in a winning score sheet. I'm guessing that's from the 7 p.m. match, which earns him a spot into the, the big show starting on Tuesday. So Jeffrey would have loved to have landed straight on this seven, but it shouldn't cause too many issues. But I tell you what, look at this. It just shows you. It's amazing when you just don't quite land right. I mean, it has to be said, he is dogging his brains out here. He was 4 2 up, and he's had two unbelievable opportunities. He's just not closing the match out. And how many chances does he need? That means if he gets a chance, if he gets a chance in the last rack, can he take it? It's okay. It's a little bit wider than he would have liked. I just sense both players are feeling it a little bit now, don't they? A little bit. Chang's probably in it, feeling it a different way, thinking, oh, I'm back to the table here. I'm surprised here. A couple of times he probably felt he, he was out. Jeff's probably got that sick to his stomach feeling, knowing he's had two opportunities now to finish this hasn't done so and now they're both going to be on the hill good news for Mr. DeLuna is that it's his break but you can see a little frustration there I think he's trying to say um, he had a skid there so I'm not so sure maybe he did, maybe he didn't I'm going to give one last shout out and thank you to our sponsors this evening, Master Billiard Chalk, Predator Q, Cyclop Pool Balls, Diamond Billiard Products, How Tips, Andy Billiard Cloth, Q Sports International, the Rio Hotel and Casino, and of course, of course, the WPA. Like we were saying, the winner of this game, the winner of this match, moves on to the stage two event, which will start in two days. Excuse me, on Tuesday. Now he's had two glorious opportunities in the previous two racks. I know he's got the break, but you just feel like he needs them all over the hole. I love this angle when he's breaking. Let's look at those feet again. And he's crunched them, and the balls are going everywhere. And I do kind of like that. I kind of like that justice. Do you? Yeah, I do. I'm a bit sick like that, but I, di I didn't really want to see him get an easy run out because I feel like he's, I did. he's missed his two opportunities so I want to see him fight for it now and come with the goods I think it would have been a bit unfair if they'd have just all landed over the pocket I think, I think a golden break would have just been shocking at this point <laughs> yeah I must admit I wouldn't have liked to have seen that one now he's in a funny spot here where do you push to obvious position would be kind of on the right side of the table But what do you do if Chang puts you back? This is what's going through his mind.
the problem with pushing so low down table is you're leaving maximum distance. So if you have to play like a kind of thin off the one ball, that becomes a little bit harder. to see what Chang's going to do now. Be a really gutsy bank. I don't think either player wants to take that risk. But the reward is massive should you make it. Not so sure if there's a right or wrong in this instance. It's 4-4. Four, four. Winner of this rat will advance to stage two. That will buy them some time off as well to get ready. Let's give it back. Not too shocked about that. Let's see what Jeff does. Jeff's got a slightly more aggressive style than Chang does. Jeff might just go all out and go for that bank. I don't see an, an easy safe on offer. No, it looks like he's queuing to the right side of the one ball, so maybe he's just going to thin it. I'm not a big fan of that shot. Do you know when he played the push out, I nearly said, well, I did say, when you're leaving big distance, it's so hard to hit thin because of the big distance. He might have been better pushing a bit further up table. So you had a bit more control. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? I don't know. He were in, he were in a tricky spot there. Kind of like Chang putting him back though. Because he knows Jeffrey's missed two golden opportunities and all. And here's a golden opportunity for Chang. Well, he's got to make this one ball first. It's full length shot got to control it as well to get on the two. Is he spinning this with left? This is not a gimmick at all. Wow. Oh my gosh. But if you're Chang Yulong. Oh man, he just threaded that needle through traffic. That was a great shot, that oh wasn't it? Then. Sick. Literally. He's got a natural angle here. He can just pocket this too and drift naturally past the eight for an excellent position on the three ball. Sometimes you're always a bit wary of the table rolling off. And I'll tell you something, Jeffrey, back to back days, he's going to have lost the hot seat match. And mentally, that might wear thin because he's had two unbelievable opportunities to win the match yes, it has he to has. be said no, he's I thrown agree. this match away hasn't he Chang won't mind though he'll just be happy to get over the line we called it on day one we always fancied him to qualify for stage two and don't be surprised if he goes super deep in stage two Jeff's got to be, Jeff's got to be sick. This simple nine ball, and it puts him through. Jeffrey DeLuna will be distraught. Chang Yulong advances to stage two. That's all for today, folks. We'll be back tomorrow for day three at 12 noon. I'm Ben Sutherland, joined by Carl Boyce. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow.